This is a story of Frank Lucas. You might know him from the movie American Gangster. Today, we're going to be discussing Frank Lucas. It's no wonder why Ridley Scott made the movie American Gangster, a movie based on the life of Harlem kingpin Frank Superfly Lucas. The details of his ascent to the upper echelon of 1970s drug trade are as widely cinematic as they are lightly exaggerated. What better medium to tell such a trumped-up tale than a Hollywood blockbuster? Though the 2007 movie, supposedly based on a true story, starring Denzel Washington as Frank Lucas, many in Lucas's orbit has said that the film is largely fabricated, but piecing together the truth of his life and his many misdeeds is a daunting task. Born on September the 9th, 1930, in LaGrange, North Carolina, Frank Lucas had a rough start to life. He grew up poor and spent a lot of time looking after his siblings, and living in the Joe Crow South took a toll on him. According to Lucas, he was first inspired to enter a life of crime after he witnessed Ku Klux Klan members murder his 12-year-old cousin, Obadiah, when he was just six years old. The Klan claimed that Obadiah had engaged in some reckless eyeballing of a white woman, so they fatally shot him. Lucas reportedly fled to New York in 1946 after beating up his former boss at a pipe company and robbing him of $400, and he quickly realized there was much more money to be made in the Big Apple. From robbing local bars at gunpoint to swiping diamonds from jewelry stores, he slowly became bolder and bolder with his crimes. He eventually caught the eye of drug trafficker Ellsworth Bumpy Johnson, who acted as a mentor of sorts to Lucas and taught him everything he knew. While Lucas took Johnson's teachings to the next level with his crime organization, there was a sad and ironic twist to Lucas' desire to get back at the KKK members who murdered his cousin. Thanks to his deadly brand of imported heroin known as Blue Magic, he ended up wreaking havoc in Harlem, one of New York City's most iconic black neighborhoods. Frank Lucas has probably destroyed more black lives than the KKK could ever dream of, prosecutor Richie Roberts told the New York Times in 2007. Roberts was later portrayed by Russell Crowe in the movie. How Frank Lucas supposedly got his hands on this blue magic is perhaps the wildest detail of all. He allegedly smuggled the 98% pure heroin into the United States by using the coffins of dead soldiers coming home from Vietnam. Some called this his most culturally pungent claim to fame. To his credit, Lucas said he didn't put the smack next to the bodies or inside the bodies, as some legends have suggested. There's no way I'm touching dead anything, he said. He instead said that he had a carpenter buddy flown in to make 28 copies of government coffins rigged up with false bottoms. With the help of former US Army Sergeant Leslie Ike Atkinson, who just so happened to be married to one of his cousins, Lucas claimed to have smuggled more than $50 million worth of heroin into the US. He said $100,000 of that was on a plane carrying Henry Kissinger, and that he said at one point he dressed up as a lieutenant colonel to aid in the operation. You should have seen me, he said. I could really salute. If this so-called story sounds like an impossible operation, it just might have been. It's a total lie that's fueled by Frank Lucas for personal gain. Atkinson told the Toronto Star in 2008, I never had anything to do with transporting heroin in coffins or cadavers, though Atkinson fessed up to smuggling. He said it was inside furniture and that Lucas wasn't involved with making the connection. How Lucas managed to get his hands on Blue Magic might have been a fabrication, but there's no denying that it made him a rich man. I wanted to be rich, he said. I wanted to be Donald Trump rich. And so help me God, I made it. He claimed to be making $1 million per day at one point, but that too was later discovered to be an exaggeration. In any case, he was still determined to show off his newly acquired wealth. 
So in 1971, he decided to wear $100,000 full-length chinchilla coat at a Muhammad Ali boxing match. But as he later wrote, this was a massive mistake. Apparently, Lucas Coat caught the eye of law enforcement, who were surprised that he had better seats than Diana Ross and Frank Sinatra. As Lucas put it, I left that fight a marked man. So regardless of how much money he was actually making, Lucas didn't get to enjoy the fruits of his labor for very long. After supposedly hobnobbing with some of New York's wealthiest and most famous folks in the early 1970s, the famously fur-clad Frank Lucas was arrested in 1975, thanks in part to Robert's effort and some mafia snitching. The drug lord's assets were seized, including $584,683 in cash, and he was sentenced to 70 years in prison. Lucas later bristled at such a low count of cash money and accused the DEA of stealing from him. 584,000, what's that, he boasted in Las Vegas. I lost 500 Gs in half an hour playing Baccarat. Lucas likely would have been in prison for the rest of his life if he didn't become a government informant, enter the witness protection program and ultimately help the DEA nab more than a hundred drug related convictions. One relatively minor setback aside, a seven year sentence for attempted drug deal in his post informant life. He went on parole in 1991. Overall, Lucas managed to get through everything relatively unscathed and reportedly enriched. According to the New York Times Post, Lucas received $300,000 from Universal Pictures and another $500,000 from the studio and Denzel Washington to buy a house and a new car. But at the end of the day, beyond the ravages of his famous blue magic, Lucas was an admitted killer. I killed the baddest motherfuckers, not just in Harlem, but in the world. And an admitted liar, on a grand scale. Robin Hood, he was not. In some of his last interviews, Frank Lucas walked back a bit of the bravado, admitting, for instance, that he'd only one false bottom coffin made. And for what it's worth, Lucas also admitted that only 20% of American gangster is true. But the guys that busted him said that's also an exaggeration. DEA agent Joseph Sullivan, who raided Lucas's home back in 1975, said it's closer to single digits. His name is Frank Lucas, and he was a drug dealer. And that's where the truth in this movie ends.